The secret behind Verstappen's masterclass. Verstappen's dominance in Miami has shown yet again the scary truth of Formula One, with Red Bull topping every session and presenting a monotonous scenario in the sport. However, it was very odd that Verstappen was able to beat Perez in his own game, tyre preservation, and it wasn't even close. How did Verstappen manage to drive the wheels off the RB19 for so much that on 40-lap old hard tyres he was setting consecutive fastest laps of the race? Red Bull, and especially Verstappen, deal very well with mathematical improbabilities, as the Dutchman has managed to transform unfavourable grid placements into impressive outcomes this season. In Saudi Arabia, he overcame a 15th place starting position, caused by a drive shaft problem in qualifying, and finish second with an aggressive push to the front. Securing a victory from the ninth spot would not be an insurmountable challenge considering the immense edge provided by the RB19 package. His goal after that terrible qualifying session in which he unluckily slipped at turn 5 and was forced to abandon the fast lap, but by the time he wanted to return to the track the session was already red flagged and he was forced to start from P9. The whole set of circumstances that make this circuit interesting is that the Miami circuit had been somewhat unpredictable leading up to the race due to a freshly resurfaced track. After constructing the track around Hard Rock Stadium the previous year, the asphalt underwent jet blasting to remove excess oil surfacing, but this cleaning method was deemed too harsh, causing the track to deteriorate over the weekend. This year's organizers opted for a different approach, sacrificing grip in the initial sessions to preserve the track. While the track was still somewhat perilous offline, most issues stemming from low grip conditions were eliminated, and as a result, Verstappen could not count on cars in front of him making mistakes and needed to gain ground himself to have a shot at advancing in the race. Following a post-qualifying conversation with his engineers, he favoured experimenting with an alternative tyre strategy, diverging from the anticipated medium-hard progression in what was largely expected to be a one-stop race. We were quite strongly opinionated on that already, Verstappen explained with regards to starting on the hard tyre. Then, of course, you have to discuss it with the team, with the strategists. They said in terms of race time, it was very close between doing a medium hard or hard medium. It didn't really matter. When you start on the hard, the risk is a bit higher because we only had one set, so if you have a puncture or whatever, then of course your race is a bit tougher. But I was happy to take that gamble. Perez, like the other top seven starters, chose the medium hard strategy due to the heightened risk associated with his pole position. Verstappen, on the other hand, had little to lose by attempting an alternate approach, while his teammate did. The Mexican driver wanted to avoid a repeat of the Saudi Arabia start, where Fernando Alonso briefly overtook him and led the race in Jeddah. Though Perez eventually regained his position, it introduced unnecessary danger. This time, Perez had a stronger start, fending off Alonso at the first corner by sticking to the inside line and quickly distancing himself. But instead of hesitating in the initial laps and allowing Alonso to follow his moves, Perez aimed to quickly build a one-second gap and establish a lead. Not to counter Alonso's potential attack, but to protect against Verstappen's charge. In contrast, Verstappen's start was more measured and he was overtaken by Valtteri Bottas, another driver affected by the Leclerc accident in Q3. However, Verstappen soon recovered, swiftly passing Bottas and Esteban Ocon to join the intensifying battle between Kevin Magnussen and Leclerc. As the two Ferrari-powered cars jockeyed for position, Verstappen made a bold move on the fourth lap, going three wide into the first corner and overtaking both drivers while Magnussen managed to stay ahead of Leclerc. Verstappen found himself in a pocket of clear air, allowing him to record two consecutive fastest laps, which positioned him behind George Russell's Mercedes. Russell trailed Pierre Gasly slightly slowing Verstappen's progress. However, by lap 8, Verstappen took advantage of Red Bull's potent drag reduction system and overtook Russell at turn 17, moving into 5th place. Just a lap later, he passed Gasly in a similar manner, securing 4th place. Meanwhile, Perez's gap to Alonso, which had initially plateaued at approximately 1.6 seconds, began to increase as he overcame concerns about tyre management, despite the graining issues on the right front tyre had caused Perez to worry about achieving his tyre life target, leading to his conservative approach during the first 10 laps of the race. Very early on, I saw that the medium was very fragile initially, so I had to protect the tyre quite a lot, just to make lap 15 or so, said Perez. 
It was really hard to lean on the tyre. The whole right-hand side was really difficult. I could see that Max was closing up on the hards. From that point on, I knew that the race was looking difficult. Red Bull team boss Christian Horner didn't quite agree with his charges assessment, although he admitted that it was only through hindsight that he felt Perez had the materials to perhaps push a little harder. By lap 12, Perez's lead had grown to 2.4 seconds, and Alonso found himself contending with fellow Spaniard Carlos Sainz for third place. Place. This situation favoured Verstappen, who pursued the duo and overtook signs on lap 14 with a move into turn 11, claiming a podium position with 43 laps remaining. A lap later, he easily passed Alonso at the same corner. The gap between the two leading Red Bulls was just under four seconds, but Perez struggled to maintain his front right tyre's lifespan, reporting that it was beginning to give up. He managed to hold on until lap 20, at which point Verstappen had reduced the initial gap by half before switching to hard tyres for the remainder of the race. Though Perez wasn't exactly sailing smoothly, mentioning that his upshifts were not smooth, he maintained his lead for the time being. After warming up his hard tyres, Perez's gap to Verstappen remained around 18 seconds. To close that distance, he needed to strike a balance between speed and tyre conservation for the remaining 37 laps on the white-walled compound. Progress was gradual yet noticeable. By the time Alonso pitted for his own set of hard tyres on lap 24, Perez had shaved a second off the advantage. Verstappen maintained a strong pace, consistently hitting high 1 minute 31 second lap times with the goal of preserving the gap. Although Perez's initial laps on his new tyres were faster, allowing him to continue cutting down the deficit, the lap times started to converge as the race progressed past the halfway point. With tyre wear becoming less of a concern and the track rubbering in more consistency, Verstappen was given the green light to push his tyres harder. On lap 32, the gap between the Red Bulls was at its smallest during during the pit stop phase, with Perez closing in to 14.8 seconds behind Verstappen. However, both drivers had to manage their Pirelli tyres. Verstappen was concerned about reaching his target pit stop lap and began conserving his tyres around the time of Perez's stop. Once the gap was at its narrowest, Verstappen received a radio call to start pushing harder, and the gap began to widen again. Before his pit stop at the end of lap 45, Verstappen had not only recovered but increased the lead he held when Perez pitted. By the time Verstappen pitted for medium tyres, he and Perez were 18.5 seconds apart. Although Perez took the lead as a result, the gap between them was a mere 1.6 seconds. Verstappen quickly caught up and was within DRS range by lap 46. However, Perez didn't concede easily, forcing Verstappen to take the long way around the hairpin at turn 17. However, Verstappen reclaimed the lead on lap 48. With worn tyres, Perez had no chance of a comeback. Seven laps from the finish, he asked if Verstappen had a problem but was told the leader was merely managing his pace. Accepting his fate, Perez stopped trying to fight a losing battle. Verstappen's 1 minute 29.708 second lap time on the penultimate lap solidified his victory, finishing 5.4 seconds ahead of Perez to secure his 38th Formula 1 win. Determining whether the medium-hard or hard-medium strategy was superior is challenging, but it's difficult to imagine a scenario in which Verstappen didn't emerge victorious. He demonstrated exceptional tyre management skills, an aspect of his driving that is often underrated, and secured a decisive win over Perez in the sweltering Miami heat. In contrast to the lively Miami event, Imola will offer a completely different atmosphere and aesthetic appeal. For those hoping to see an underdog join the competition, they'll be crossing their fingers for a different outcome as well. What do you think about this Verstappen masterclass? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and we will see you next time!